wow, this is a novelty. I'm traveling with hand luggage and I managed to have all the right QR codes and COVID passes to get myself to Spain to drive something super exciting. Of course, it's electric, but it's not just electric. It's really sporty. Now, when I say sporty, I'm not talking just about instant acceleration at the lights. We know electric cars are good at that. No, I'm talking about sporty around the corners. And forget about those billion pound electric hypercars. This is a car that you and I might actually be able to afford. So here we are in Barcelona because this car has a very definite Spanish flavour. That is the Cupra Born, a five-seater all-electric hatchback that Cupra says is the perfect blend of electrification and performance. Well, I think I'll be the judge of that. Anyway, what do you think? How good does it look? If you're thinking, hang on a minute, that Cupra Born looks just a little bit familiar, well, you would be right. Now, Cupra is normally associated with making a Seat a little bit more sporty, a little bit faster, but actually they became their very own standalone brand in 2018. Now, Seat is part of the Volkswagen group, like Audi, like Skoda, and like any good family, they share things, perhaps unwilling at times, but, the Cupra Born is in fact the sister car to the VW ID3. With a Spanish twist, of course. Ole! Sorry, they made me do that. But it's still a good looking thing. And dare I say it, a tiny bit better looking than the ID3. There's the same basic proportions, kind of an egg shaped bullet, but the Born has a cooler nose and huge set of rear lights. It feels a little bit lower, more purposeful with these side skirts and comes with copper accents, which frankly are just super cool. Now, once you get inside, take it all in um, because you do get that sense of VW deja vu, but it's no bad thing. This is actually a really nice place to be. Um, the first thing I noticed has to be these amazing bucket seats. They are pretty dominating in the interior and um, they're kind of encroaching your space but I love them they are really really comfortable and actually I do really like this recycled neoprene it's sort of everywhere when you start looking for it it's down here in the center console and um, it's also on the seats um, it's called Dynamica um, and of course not only does it have sustainable properties but it also actually feels quite nice now, the other thing that I really like is in the centre of the bucket seats, there is this material called Sequel. Now, this is quite important because it's actually made from recycled plastic bottles um, and also plastic taken out of the sea. So just think what you could be sitting on someone's recycled Diet Coke or something found at the bottom of the ocean. Um, but again, it's the Cupra Born's nod to sustainability, which you can see kind of scattered around the car. So when someone describes the interior of this car as rubbish, it's actually a compliment. Um, the other thing that is obviously staring at you in the face is this brilliant 12 inch touchscreen. Um, and again, it's angled towards the driver, putting the driver at the center of the whole driving experience. Um, you also have an additional screen right in front of you, a bit smaller. And one of the first things I notice, which I absolutely love, is I love as soon as I get in the car to change um, the location of my steering wheel. Um, and the screen moves with it. So the steering wheel is never in the way of your screen, which does happen in some other cars. So that was a big thumbs up for me. Um, the other thing is that you've got this massive center console. It really is quite big, uh, which makes it feel a little less spacious up front. However, you've got loads of storage space for things like surgical masks. Uh, you could have a lot of masks in this storage space if you wanted. The other thing that I do really like as well is the gear shift because it's up here right next to where your hands are on the steering wheel. All you have to do, click it back for reverse, click it forward for drive. 
a motion for park. I don't understand why more electric cars don't have this gear shift up here. Honestly, it is so easy to use. It's so intuitive. I do like the sporty steering wheel, um, decent size, um, and that comes as standard. Um, now, you will notice on the steering wheel, there is this lovely copper logo. And then you start to look around and notice that there is copper trim everywhere. I'm not a huge fan of the colour copper, so I'm not quite sure if I really like this trim everywhere or not. Um, but they have taken the opportunity to put it on almost everything. Um, there's a little bit on the vent here. It's round in this centre console. It's on the handle. Yeah, it's just a little bit everywhere. I mean, you could say it's a nice um, part of the design and style. Um, it's just maybe a little bit unnecessary the amount that has been used in the car but overall i still do really like the kind of clean sleek style of the interior now the other thing um, to point out is that there's augmented reality navigation system in the optional head-up display unfortunately this model doesn't have it um, there are other things that you can have like a beat stereo system um, there's also standard apple carplay or android auto which is great and i have been using that here today um, as well as a host of other stuff actually generally i would say it's very well equipped but small thing to be aware of the very base version is fairly bare it is fairly basic no surprises i suppose but it is just worth noting now there's also plenty of standard kit all the details of that is actually found on electrifying.com so do make sure you check it out now the other thing that you'll find is that it has the same kind of comprehensive active safety systems that you find on the id3 which of course is always going to be a positive Ah, now on to the versions. Right, well, here comes the rundown. There will be four versions of the Cupra Born on sale in the UK with three different battery sizes. So there's the cheapest, slowest one with the smallest battery and 211 miles of range at the bottom. And then they're the most expensive one with the biggest battery, the longest range, right on top with 335 miles of range. Now, the two in the middle have a medium sized battery and the same range of 260 miles. But one of them has a thing called e-boost, which is like a go faster button for your car. A bit like fan boost in Formula E, if you know what that is. That means that the e-boost mid-sized battery version becomes the fastest in the range, mainly because the bigger battery weighs more and therefore isn't the fastest. However, the bigger battery version isn't that much lower and genuinely 335 miles of potential range is really lovely to have. What a treat. Now that one also has the option of 125 kilowatt DC charging, which means up to 62 miles of range in just seven minutes on a rapid charger. But I guess the big question here is whether Cupra has actually made a car that is actually sporty, which means I better get on with the driving. Okay, so what have we got here? Well, this is the version with the 58 kilowatt hour battery, which gives you just over 200 brake horsepower. Um, well, I've got to say, it feels like, surprise, surprise, an ID3, <laughs> it really does. I think because the 58 kilowatt hour battery that I'm driving at the moment doesn't come with the e-boost and it's not really the sportier version don't get me wrong it's a brilliant brilliant drive and um, it's really smooth it's very comfortable it's nice and dynamic and um, you can actually feel where the engineers have been working on it to sharpen it up a little bit um, but overall I would say it's very similar to the ID3 which is kind of what we were expecting um, if we look at the sportiness of it I think obviously it depends what mode you're in it's definitely more sporty than pretty much any other electric hatchback I've driven, maybe bar the electric Mini. Um, now, the Bourne comes with standard sports suspension, but you can also option the dynamic chassis control system for even more pointiness. Um, and that comes with then four modes. You've got range, comfort, individual, and Cupra. I am going to whack it into performance at the moment because you really do notice a difference in the way that it drives. And let's see what a difference it makes. 
oh yes and that is exactly what I was hoping for you can really feel the difference actually when you do put it in the performance mode there um, you know just adding to the sportiness of this drive Okay, so what about the other driving modes? Well, you've got range, which, as you can imagine, gives you the maximum range available while driving, much more sedate, similar to comfort, really. And then individual means you can set things up exactly how you would prefer. And then if the Cupra model is available, that is just everything turned up to the max. And I think it's how we should be driving it for the rest of today. No. It's not an electric GTI, but actually when you get into a corner, it delivers a really engaging drive. You can even get bespoke tyres to get the most out of the car's range and grip. Add that to near perfect 50-50 weight distribution, a rear mounted motor, rear wheel drive and a heavy battery held low in the car. And this is an electric car that's actually really fun on twisty roads. Then, when you hit the Ebu switch, you get all of the available power for a short burst. Perfect for that quick, safe overtake. Okay, time for the verdict on the Cupra Born. Well, this is a bit of a complicated one, I think, because for so long, when we think about electric cars, we think about range, and rightly so, of course. But I think now it is time to start thinking about which cars can convert that instant acceleration that we get from electric cars into something that is consistently fun to drive? Yes, I know there is the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron and many others, but they're expensive and they're quite big cars. So they need to be fun to drive to make up for the lack of noise and lack of gears. So if you're looking for a super fun car to drive, then I really don't think you should look that much further than this Cupra Born. Okay, is it the equivalent of a Mark II Golf GTI 16 valve? No, probably not. But if you're looking for a pure electric hatchback that is fun to drive, that has this kind of sporty look that comes with all the tech that you would expect, then really, I do think the Cooper Bourne could be the answer.